My name is Anthony Azekwa, and I'm an artist, I'm an author, and you know, I create. But it is recorded, you know, that um, there was a man, there was an African who, you know, had risen to the ranks of samurai, yeah, the first recorded one. See, the homecoming for me is also like a celebration, you know, I've done work with art and writing for eight years now. So, you know, this period especially is going to be a celebration of the artwork especially. So, you know, the homecoming collections are mostly NFTs. So, you know, there's the homecoming volume one with Nifty Gateway, homecoming volume two with Athen and homecoming volume three. For me, when I'm telling a story, I realize that there's two ways you can tell a story. You can either you know, get these bricks and build this house and be throwing it at everybody. You tell everybody this very robust history. Or you can kind of craft bricks and give it to your viewers. Let both of us build this house together. I wanted the collections to be work that I, that you wouldn't really expect from me, you know. So let's say there's a way that I was used to painting, even though it's the way that I was used to translating images in my mind through design. And now it's like, even with Homecoming Volume 1 with Nifty and Homecoming Volume 2 with Athen, I want it to be so that people will be like, is this the same artist? Like, who is this guy? Like, you know, it's kind of like just this way of really being loose with it as possible, gaining from all the influences I can and really just becoming the most honest part of myself. The first few years of my life, let's say the first nine years, I grew up in a Sule. And uh, I think I loved books, I loved stories. But at that time, you know, I wanted to be a scientist because I like science fiction and I thought, okay, you know what, one plus one is two, like this is how my life is going to go. I think uh, in my later years, when I entered secondary school, I think that's when I started really writing and properly applying myself to this craft. Um, at 13, I started writing short stories, you know, for my secondary school. Um, I won some of the prizes. I was a science student, so it was a bit tricky, you know, balancing those things, because at the time I was still very confused about what it was that I wanted to do. But I think as the years passed um, and I went to university, it became clearer then that the creative field was where I was meant to be. So, you know, uh, stories have always been interesting to me. I've always loved reading. Then the art came a bit later than everything else. With 2016, that's when I started drawing. You know, my laptop had broken, I couldn't write anymore, and it felt like, with me, if I'm not creating, I can't stay in one place. So it felt like I needed to do something else to properly apply myself. So I started drawing, and um, one drawing after one drawing, one commission after one commission, I was able to afford better tools. Because at the time, all I had, I didn't, I couldn't afford you know, canvases or paints because in Lagos they're expensive. So I had my HP mouse and then this, I stole from my sister who's outside. And then I had my laptop and that's what I was using to paint. But you know, as time went on, commission after commission, I was able to afford better tools and just get more confidence in my craft. So uh, this is the Traveler. I think this was painted, if I'm correct, last year. Um, it took me, about six to 10 hours, you know? For me, the Traveler, I think now that I look at it, even in this big space, it took a whole new meaning of, you know, we're always traveling, all of us, you know, from birth to death, we're always moving from one place to another. And this painting to me is like, you know, it's all of us, we're always moving, we're always in this state of movement. But then at a lot of points in our journey, we're always looking to either the past, which is very clear, you know, in our minds, or the future, which is still very blurry. So the Traveler to me is just, you know, that painting of human existence, of moving from A to B. The way I look at it is like, um, they're all different dialects of the same language of creativity. You know, I feel like some stories are best told in one format or the other. And with me, I feel like um, that's my goal as an artist or a creator, to be able to distinguish which one is best for which one. So the Red Man, for instance, is a good painting. I think this is one of my most popular paintings, you know, the Red Man. Um, it was painted last year, June, June 26th. Um, it was meant to just be a practice sketch. I was practicing black and white. 
So that's why the figure is in black and white. And as I was painting, I just said, you know what, let me just put a red background. Like, let's not be as if I didn't paint it. And at the time, it was around 2, 3 a.m. And I was very tired, you know, my back was hurting, my eyes were blurry. And I said, you know what, I didn't have time to fill in the pupils. So that's why it's blank. So when I posted it, a lot of, you know, people liked it. And I see now that like millions of people have seen it since then. So I think definitely it's a work that um, I treasure. I think it's been listed with charge particles for a lot of money, but um, yeah, it's one of my favorites. It took me about six, this is actually the shortest painting here. It took about six hours. The Red Man, <laughs> you know, the Red Man is a good painting, but I feel like if I try to write the story behind that, it may not have hit the viewers as hard. You know, I have this story, the Garden of Old Lagos, and I'm thinking, you know what, if I try to paint that scene, I may not have had the same skills or it may not have hit that same spot. So I feel like the answer is yes, I'm all of them. You know, I try to embody all of those in my craft and in what I try to do. So for me, uh, Yasuke was painted, I think September 22nd, last year as well. Um, it was based on a story I'd read or I'd watched on a video two years prior about this African samurai who nobody had actually heard about. So at the time, you know, I think I had just been tired. I'd been doing a lot of red man promotion and just sorting a lot of marketing and I wanted to just rest and relax with the painting. And so I decided, okay, why don't I just paint that story I heard that time? So I painted it and it became Yasuke and then this also became a very popular painting where it's like if you Google Yasuke, you see, you know, this painting. And I didn't even know at the time, but Netflix had already been working on a documentary developing um, a Yasuke, sorry, a Yasuke anime. But so, yeah, I think it's also one of my favorite paintings as well. You know, I really took a lot of cultural references for it and I was proud of how it came out. I think this also took about six hours. So I think both of these are the shortest paintings. And but what inspires me is I feel like I grew up with a lot of Enid Blyton, a lot of uh, J.K. Rowling in the air, like we cried, and these are great writers, but not many of them wrote about realities I could relate to. And you know, even growing up now, we find there are many African-American writers in the diaspora who are writing about these myths. But when you hear them, when you read them, you know, there's a bit of a disconnect. There's like, you can tell that this is my story, but it's in someone else's land. So I feel like for me, I wanted to write stories that I enjoyed, stories that showcase my own history and my own wants and my own likes. And with stories like that, you know, it really gave me the opportunity to like blossom and try new things and really focus on story points that other people wouldn't consider. And I'm grateful that I'm able to like, communicate with them now, like, you know, one-on-one. Chico's here will be, she's the first oil painter I've ever seen, like artist, that's about four years ago, at an event that we were both doing, you know, she was painting live and then she had a canvas and she's just painting. I was like, how are you doing? You're a magician. Like, you're clearly not, you're not one of us anymore. You know, there's Dukes, you know, um, Dukes Arts. He's done a lot of the great covers you've seen of like Nigerian music. Then there's Dura Arts as well, you know, who even did um, David O's A Good Time cover. There's Neo K, Wo, Renike, like, it would be Honor. Uh, there's so many of them. I think this was last year, and I was still trying to find my artistic like uh, footing. And you know, two of the people I looked up to, Dukes Art and Dura Art, they'd done lots of covers. Like, I mean, nine out of ten of Nigerian covers were done by either of them because they are so good at their craft. They're able to like communicate that message effectively of your project. And I was looking at them, I was like, you know what? This is what I want to do. Like, this is the path. Like, I've seen these guys. Maybe this is where I'm, I'm supposed to go. So for a while, I remember I had met Tech from Show Them Camp a few months prior and then he hit me up last year and then we did our first cover. So I was really happy about that. And the Kule Gold hit me up, funny enough, a few weeks before the Red Man dropped, so let's say May, you know, and he told me about this idea for AG Baby and we were able to paint that. So that was good, I loved that too. But as time went on, I realized that it wasn't, it wasn't what, it, it wasn't what I wanted to say because I feel like there's so many titans in the field already and they've said, they're saying their things and it's like, I can't really enter that field. It's not really in my heart like that. So um, yeah, doing Black Bones cover this year especially was cool. So even now when I do cover art, it's mainly about artists that I like, you know, 
that is that I really like, that I really want to be part of the project. But nowadays, most of the time, I just say no. Homecoming, man. Mid August this year, I was having a very hard time. I was having troubles with uh, school. The relationship I was in fell apart. Um, you know, my personal life was in shambles. My work life was also in shambles. It felt like um, and then I started having health issues. My high blood pressure was going high. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. Uh, irregular heart rate. Then tremors in my hands came. And I was having a really, really horrible time, you know. So we're going to hospital after hospital because uh, the doctors will say, you know what, we did an MRI, we need this. And we just went to one doctor um, around here and he just looks at me, he does a few checkups and he's like, yeah, you have stress-induced anxiety, that's what's happening. And you know, that's the first time it flicked in my mind that for a long time, many years, I've been under a lot of stress and pressure from myself and from the people around me. And there was like this realization of, Damn, I've been rushing, I've been running, and it's this way I've been running to. Like, I'm in the hospital now. The work I gave my life to, nobody's here. You know, the people I was giving my life to, nobody's here, it's just me. I then realized that, you know, I had made a lot of these things my home. I'd made work my home, I'd made the school my home, I'd made my parents my home, I'd made the relationship my home. And when those things were gone, it's like this feeling of, damn, where do I go now? That's when it kind of hit me that, you know, my core has to be my home. Like, I have to make myself my home. There's a lot of things, like even my writing, that because of advice from people, I'd kept along the sidelines. There were things I didn't say because I was worried about what people would say. And it just occurred to me that if I am to sustain myself in this work, I have to be myself and I have to be my own home. I have to be my own space, you know? So that's what, even what the Homecoming logo is. It's uh, I have a tattoo now. Yeah, it's like three circles. You know? And it's just two circles coming back to the center. So I think it's really, that's what homecoming is about. Me coming back to myself, me admitting that, okay, really, I'm an artist, like, this is where I am. You know, for a long time, even to my parents, it felt awkward, you know, it felt strange. But now it's just a matter of admitting that, you know what, this is who I am, this is what I want, and this is where I'm going. So right now we're going to do about two pop-ups in Lagos again. You know, uh, pop-ups where I'll be selling some merchandise and also just interacting with people who support my work here in Lagos. Then we'll be gearing up for our final main exhibition in December. Oh, um, we're looking at between October, 3rd October 6th, if I'm right. Yeah, definitely. I think even when I was approached, the first thing is even when I came back, because I was ill for a while, so even now, um, creatively, I'm not as... Uh, yeah, sound, I'm not really so... I used to be able to paint for hours upon hours a day, but now I have to take it very easy. But I remember when I was approached for it, I realized that, you know, this was also kind of in line with, you know, that African blockchain and being able to bring things home again, because I'd been mentally and physically away for so long. 